everybody. Welcome to the Fran Canada podcast. I'm your host, Steve Collette, the founder of East Brands and Fran Canada. On this podcast, we speak and talk about all things franchising in Canada. And I'm really excited today to have two good friends of mine, uh, uh, really great, uh, great fellows that operate a really great business, Mike and Scott from Elite Trade Painting. And you know us the swag, boys? Huh? <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. There, yeah. there. How you doing, guys? What's going on today? Uh, Scott, you're in Moncton today, and, and Mike, you're in Halifax. So, Mike, who are you? Tell me about you. Where do you come who from? Are we? Yeah. Well, Elite Trade Painting was something that we started a number of years ago now. Um, it really was part of the business that we developed with. We originally were in a student business, and it sort of morphed into – the Elite Trade Painting brand um, and has grown over the years to uh, really capture a large part of the uh, painting market. Right. And you are the founder, right? Correct, Mike? I am the founder. Yep. Yeah. I've actually had 42 years in this business. Yeah, now. Not your first rodeo, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Been a long and how about time. you, Scott? Yeah, I've been in the business now for, uh, it's closing in on 15. I've been with Elite specifically for probably about, uh, 13 or 14 now when I was brought in um, back originally when we were making the first real push to kind of start putting systems and technology and software in place to to start thinking right. about growing this thing. Yeah. And Scott, you you own a, like you own a location. I do. Uh-huh. Yeah, I own the Moncton, New Brunswick uh, location, which has been uh, a nice little. Um, it's a good insight to have uh, for somebody who's sitting at the at the on the, technically on the top side as well. Um, and it allows you to relate a little bit, little bit more with the uh, with the franchisees you deal with on a daily basis. So, absolutely, yeah. So you guys are—I know you guys are both in the in the East Coast. Mike, you're in Halifax, and Scott, you're in Moncton. But you guys are actually all over the country. You have locations. Are. Where are your locations that you have? We have a location in Vancouver, North Vancouver, actually. Uh, we have one in Edmonton, one in Calgary. We have uh, one in Mississauga. And in Atlantic Canada, we actually have um, Moncton, Truro, the Annapolis Valley, two in Halifax. So it's um, it's it's been it's been very good. Yeah, it's been great. Well, that's great. That's uh, yeah. so yeah, you know, and and being uh, East Coast born and bred, and knowing that you are you're across the country because you, you know you can't get any you can't get any further than North Vancouver. Mm. Um, what uh so when did you start expanding through elite trade painting like that how many years ago was it that and maybe give a little context of the university painters and and the elite trade painting uh kind of the transition yeah the university painters was um started that back in 82 and it sort of went along for for a long time and 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 we sort of recognized that we had a lot of of people that were in the system that were sort of aging out of the student business and we sort of created the elite trade painting side of things to bring in some of those folks and then we quickly realized that this is a great business there's a lot of opportunity here and then we we actually looked at it and thought okay what do we need to scale this thing up? And and me and Scott and our team have really focused on bringing the systems, bringing the uh, structures in to allow the maximum amount of success for our franchisees. So uh, that's that's really been you know our, our concentration over the last eight nine years was to really bring it up to the point where someone can come in get themselves set up, be in operation in five to six months and basically start running a great business. Right. Well, here's a question. For, uh, we'll, we'll start with Scott. The non-traditional sector of the franchise industry yeah. and well, really in North America, if not the world, you're seeing the non-traditional, but no bricks and mortar where you don't need to go lease a spot where you know your customers aren't coming in to a drive through or to a store. That's really exploded. Yeah. Um. Uh. Throughout North America, especially, um, and the service based. Yeah. You know, and and again, I don't mean to keep quoting myself, but the kind of blue collar is the new white collar. Mm. You know, you've been in this industry a long time. Yeah. Uh. What do you? You know, I know this is a subjective question, but 
what would you attribute with with a lot of people going that route as opposed to the more traditional you know food uh fitness yeah yeah lean excited like what, what do you I, think I, I, I honestly and again it, it's more my kind of bias i don't have the actual answer however i i lean towards number one it it, it, it is technically let usually lower cost entry um to get into to get into that industry um and i think in today's climate um that's appealing um to people when they're entering a new business is they can see the potential for strong upside with a lower cost of entry and and usually uh a lower lower overhead um so i think that's part of it i think it's also in today's day and age a lot of people have just chosen that you know they want to get back in the field and get back in front of people and and not sit behind a desk all day and and right. they kind of they they thrive on that let me jump in my truck and just go meet with a few people and be social and and do that kind of thing and this this type of business and that home service space allows you to do that and it allows you to take joy from providing a a service to a customer and seeing it through um from one end to the other right and and, and Steve I've I've found that you know the DIY crowd, the people that used to do it themselves, just don't exist anymore. Mm. You know, there's a real element in the marketplace that, you know, um, it's not that they can't, they usually won't. Right. And and in some cases they can't. And, and, and the reality is that um, I think the generations that are coming through are less likely to be doing their own painting or their own drywall work or their own, you know, minor repairs on, on, on their houses. You just don't see that happening right. like it used to happen in the past. Mm -hmm. So that sort of made the market demand sort of just go crazy. And, right. and there's just, and there's just not enough people in that, in this industry that actually can support that demand so there's been a lot of changes especially over the last you know and i've seen it last 15 20 years the demand has just gone crazy well let's talk with them like you've been in this industry a long time yep. longer than anyone anyway, i've ever met that's been in this you you've probably seen some changes in well there's probably not a whole lot you haven't seen um and that's good insight when you get to the to the to the I don't want to say the younger generation, but you think back to, you know, the traditional trades. Like I think we've discussed this before, colonial homes. Like who could do that now? When you look at the the you know the, the, that craft, it just doesn't exist anymore. But no matter what, there's no app for painting. Um, you know, you can't you can't get a uh, yeah. an AI to do your painting for you. But what have been some mega shifts that you've seen? in the industry over, over the years. And, you know, from, from a B to C standpoint, I guess, business to customer that, that is uh, uh, kind of involving in your business. You know what, one of the things that I've noticed, especially over the last 15 years, um, the age of the client, a client that we have has gone down significantly. Really? Yeah. At one time we used to see, you know, typical client, over 50, you know, a little older, can't do the work or won't do the work or, or whatever. But now, you know, you're going out and you're meeting people that are late 20s, early 30s, young homeowners that mm -hmm. want to get painting yeah. done. And that's a, that's, a, that's a mega shift. You know, you never saw that. And, that, and, and, and that's part of the demand that's occurred in the marketplace the the age of the client has gone down significantly. Right. Yeah. So that's huge. That's well, huge. The supply and demand aspect. I mean, when you look at franchise opportunities, as you know, there's many, but 38% are food. And mm. I mean, there's there's moving franchises. There is dryer vent cleaning. There's yeah. garage floor epoxy. So the supply and demand must be going. Because, you know, and these brands are, and these industries are thriving because you need to get it done. It's essential. You know, so, I mean, with going into it, what do you look for, Mike, as a, you know, and I know it's hard to narrow it down, but 
what are some attributes you look for as a franchise partner that, that if someone wanted to get into elite trade painting, what are some of the things that check the box with you guys? I'm looking for somebody that has middle management experience or management experience, you know, someone that can look after people because the, you know, our business is people. Someone that has a little bit of sales experience is probably a, a, a great thing to have. Um, I don't necessarily need anybody to come in and, you know, have a whole bunch of painting experience. That's, pro that's, that's not really, you know, one of the boxes I need to check. It, it's great they have it, but you know what? It's, it's, I'm really looking at all the other characteristics they have. Um, I think, you know, when it comes right down to it, I'm looking for the person that actually just a good person, someone that's going to take care of their clients and look after and understand and take care of the people that work for them. I think that's really, you know, that's, that's what I look for anyway. Right. Yeah. What about so, you, Scott? What would you say? If, I think, uh, yeah. Honestly, what I, I look towards um, pe people is often underestimated the ability, not, you know, you don't need to be, you know, it, amazing, but you, you deal with people in every aspect of this business and you, you deal with it from the customer to even the franchise or franchisee relationship. You deal with it with your suppliers on a daily basis. When you're, if you're picking up paint, you deal with your employees. It's just one of those ones where if you, if you're naturally gifted at just dealing well with, with people, the rest can, can sort of be taught and systemized and all that kind of stuff. Right. And so that's really, you know, oftentimes I get asked, Oh, are you, are you guys selling to painters already into in, in the industry who are trying to go and not, it's not always the case. It's, right. it's, um, it's not what we're looking for. Paint experience. It, it can be taught, um, you know, paint coatings and all that kind of stuff can be, can be taught. And, and you hire good people to, to be in your business that know the painting. Um, and, and that's kind of where we approach that from. So I think, I think the key statement here, Steve, to make is that, you hire good painters to work yeah, for you. Exactly. Right. You don't need to be a good painter. That's right. not that's not part of, you know, you need to be a good manager. You need to be a good operator. You need to be a good salesperson. You have to be someone that deals with people well. But knowing how to cut a straight line with a brush is not a requirement. Right. Well, that's great. Cause and of course you get that you get we get those questions. Now you look at it from a competition standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, and I say this with the utmost sincerity and non-derogatory to anyone who owns a painting shop, but your, your competition can be a little bit unsophisticated when it comes to a business, you know, because what you're looking for, if correct me if I'm wrong, is someone who wants to work on the business, not necessarily in it. Um, and you have all sorts of tools uh, to do that. I think that when you look at it now and being in the trenches of people that are and, and discussing with people that are looking for opportunities, the actual service that you provide is about three, four pegs down from their decision. You know, it, it, it's, you know, someone doesn't buy a, a, a burger franchise because they love the burgers, right? Because they want to go in and make them. So, you know, looking at the, the very top and you come in, is the industry booming? Absolutely. I don't think you have to convince or educate people on that. Um, but you guys have a lot of tools, arguably more than I've ever seen in, 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 in your industry. So technology is something that has certainly helped. And you guys take that seriously. Scott, can you touch on, on the technology side of your business? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess um, where to start with it. Cause there are so many pieces that touch, you know, so many different aspects of the business, but I, I think right at the core of it is kind of our, our, our custom software system that we've, that we've put in place that is really operates at the, at the center of, um, the franchisees business. And, and that that's everything from a, uh, a CRM to a degree through to the estimating software, uh, which allows us to onboard and teach, really anyone how to, how to quote um, uh, that takes that through to scheduling of a job. Once it's won uh, through cost management of that job, labor material, right. and so on. Uh, and then straight through to providing the information needed to get your staff paid um, at payroll time. Uh, and then uh, obviously make sure that the, 
you're you're making the money your business needs as well. And right. so that's that's really we've got a, a pretty um, uh, slick system um, that we've spent a lot of time fine tuning. Uh, that helps franchisees kind of streamline. And I find that's what really allows franchisees to grow a little quicker is when you give them the tools and the systems um, where they can, they don't need to be thinking about every little nuance right. of the business. Right. They can just kind of jump in and, and roll with the systems. That's where they have the most chance for success. So. Right. Mike, with with that, you – Support is one of the, the, the key words in, in, in any franchise system, what a franchise can expect, a franchise owner can expect to have. And, you know, you guys have seen to, you, you want to solve the problems before they come. And it, it, it seems like with your business model, there's not a whole lot that's thrown at you that you don't have a solution for. Um, over the years, you know, you've probably seen that adaptation that you've taken into your business. And I can tell you, I remember getting a house built and literally having a quote for some of the services on a back of a package of cigarettes, right? So, you know, but you guys, it's like when Scott was talking about all that, the 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 actual painting of the business is only one aspect. So with with implementing all these uh systems and changes what have you seen mike over the years that has just really helped the franchise owner um or any painting uh for that matter just become easier you know years ago when i first started the business i would go out and i would walk around the house do a quote for the client come back write up the quote write it out by hand Four, four part form, you know, basically had it all filled out, then had to make an appointment to basically come back and present the quote to them. And the whole process was, was hours. Yeah. Hours. And, and, you know, realistically it could, could even take me days to put it all together. And so when we introduced our custom software, the whole thing changed, everything changed at that point. And, you know, one of the key elements of, of our system is the ability to go out, you're doing a quote. I literally can, you know, we can walk around a house, enter all the numbers in. And before we even leave, we can have the quote fully written, priced, accurately priced, accurate, way, way more accurate than, than, you know, when I used to walk around. Right, right. And, and, and you know, the reality was, is I remember walking around the house and I'd be putting all my numbers in and I come back later and I go, geez, I, I don't know if I measured this thing here. Right. Or I did I, and even when I put all the numbers together, sometimes I'd get something like, oh, did I do a primer coat in that? And and you could write it in that you're going to do a primer coat, but you didn't cost it. In. But with the software, you can't make those mistakes. Right. And and the reality is, is that I have it we have it happen all the time. I go out, deliver a quote to a client. It's like, wow, you guys got a quote to us already. The other guys were here a week and a half ago. And we haven't even heard from them. Right. Yeah. Right. And and, and you know, in, in the industry that we're in, the trade industry, um, and, and again, I don't want to bad mouth anybody, but the downside of a lot of trades, they just simply don't get the quotes back. Mm. You know, they have an opportunity to provide a quote to a client and it doesn't get there. That's huge. That's a lost opportunity that, you know, in our, we, we just don't have that. And, and it's mostly because, you know, we're able to deliver quotes easily, quickly. Um, you know, the system sort of follows them up, you know, they send a quote out and then the next day we're getting an email to them to say, Hey, look, do you have any questions? And then, then a week later, hey, can can we can we help you make the decision? So that all sort of generates a lot of um, a lot of sales for us. Well, and, it seems like, like you don't shoot first and hope hopefully you make a profit, right? Yeah. You have that 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 there. And, and would you say like when you're talking about the unsophisticated style of 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 and again unsophisticated, that's not towards a person, it's towards the operation of their business. The fact that there's so much unsophisticated out there probably helps your business. No. Um, with, with, a yeah, lot of for sure. For sure. Um, you know, when you're competing against guys who don't have, how do I put it? The professionalism that 
we would have. I mean, you know, our industry is based on trust. People hire people to do work for them because they ultimately trust them to do the job right and, you know, basically do it, do it for the price they quote it, get the job done right and have the ability to do the job. Right. And, and, you know, that all, you know, how do you get that confidence? Well, you get the confidence by, you know, the estimator coming in, really knowing their, 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 their process and, and their products and, you know, delivering a good quote, a well-written quote. One of the, one of the things we get back from our clients all the time is how detailed our quotes are, hmm. you know, we, we, we list off the products we're going to use, a process that we're going to do. Everything's there. And, and that's huge, right? In our, in our industry, like you said, you can, have, you can have quotes written on the back of a, uh, a sheet of paper and basically says, we'll paint your house for you know, $5,000. Yeah, right. right? And, and, and the thing is, that's not a quote, right? It's not a quote. Sorry. You know, but guys consider that a quote. You know, I, I, you know, you see them all the time where they go out there, they they quote this job, and it's five thousand dollars, and you read it, and you go, "Well, what are they doing?" Yeah, yeah. you don't know. <laughs> and so then I've, had, I've seen them like under payment terms. Soon, please. With yeah, a yeah, smiley yeah. face. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah well, exactly. that's well, that's great. So I guess you know when you. When you come down, you and there's diversity in your franchise system. I know sometimes when you think trades, you think guys, but there's actually female owners in your in your in uh, absolutely. In, you know, and absolutely. It, I think that getting as franchise opportunities open up, the diversity in Canada, um, where you're seeing the average age for someone to buy a Harley Davidson now is 49 years old. I mean, you think a new Harley? Well, of course, mm. you need that one to be able to afford one. But anyway, the, you look at it, the, the people that are coming out of the woodworks that want to get into franchise are men and women, yep. um, whether they're young and they're very entrepreneurial, they want to take it. Maybe this is their, their last stop. Maybe it's their first business. Um, people that are in their forties and fifties that are retiring from corporate Canada that aren't ready to wear the cardigan and hit the golf course. Yeah. Um, but you know, so, so through all aspects, there's no real age there's no discrimination of, of, of sex. You're probably seeing lots of throughout the whole construction and trade business that diversity is, is, is something, is something fierce. Can you comment on that? Absolutely. There, you know, um, I let, let's step back to one of the key things we look for, which is the ability to manage people and talk to people and engage people that has no gender. I mean, you know, uh, as, as a matter of fact, um, you know, we even see it in our student business and the other side where, you know, the, the girls coming in are, are, are outnumbering some of the guys in a lot of areas. So um, it really is, it is a, how do I put it? I, I, I think the element of um, it being thought of as a man's game is is long gone and, and right. it should be long gone mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. you know the contracting business is is you know it it's really suited for people that are want to provide service and want to organize and, and want want to manage and that's what it's for right the fact that we're, oh. we're the fact that we're painting houses and painting businesses that's that's the that's a service that we're providing and there's great demand for that but ultimately you know, the running of the business is, is a management. Right. Right. It's um. so, you know, when, when you look at, if someone was asking, Scott, we'll put this one to you first and then we'll come back to Mike. If someone was interested, <coughs> sorry, curious, because it usually starts with curiosity. Yeah. You know, when someone's exploring uh, franchise opportunities, it doesn't happen overnight. Hopefully they've looked at a bunch of different, you know, they, they, you want, you don't want to explain to someone what a franchise is. In no. fact, sometimes that's our job. Yeah. But if, if, if someone was curious and saying, okay, well, you know, my curiosity has turned into interest. What are a couple of things you might say to someone? I don't want to say who's on the fence, who is processing the information to make a decision about elite trade painting franchise opportunities. Sure. Um, I, I mean, the two I usually lean most towards, I, I've always said that franchising is, um, 
is much like running your own business. As, as many people say, uh, you kind of just get an early cheat code um, if you get into the right system in terms of an acceleration of the stuff that any normal person starting a business struggles with for years. Um, and so with the right systems and the structure, things like the brand and the image and, and stuff that allows you to go into that customer's house on day one and gain confidence right away. Um, the, the branded clothing, the, a website that backs you up, uh, a tablet or a piece of software that has your branding on it that you quote with an email delivered quote, the stuff like that, that, that out on your own can take years mm. to kind of build an arsenal of you're, you're running with on day one. And, and that makes such a difference. So I, I would say that's, that's really where I kind of, and that's kind of a blend of, of everything. That's, you know, the branding, the imagery, the clothing suppliers, the paint suppliers, the, um, but that's kind of really where I, I push people towards is that, that ease of entry. It's um, it can be stressful starting a business and, and this ideally helps take a little bit of that out. So, right. So Mike, if, if there was someone who's curious about franchise opportunities and they're, they're exploring their options and, you know, they've landed on elite trade painting as, as one of those ones that they'd like to pursue and have some questions. You know, what would you say to someone, and not that we use the word convince, more to educate, uh, you know, what, what would you say to someone who's on the fence or 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 has shown interest in, in getting into your franchise system? You know, we have 40 years plus experience in the business. We talked about the estimating. We talked about the confidence in the estimating. Well, you know, the formulas that are in that are based on 40 years of development. Mm. You know, they work, they, they generate good prices. They allow you to, you know, price jobs up properly. Um, you know, the fact that we're centering people on the right segments of the market, you know, the, the fact that you're, you're coming in and we're directing you to the segments that you want to be in, where you're going to have the best opportunity to make the most amount from those jobs. We're not sending you to areas where, you know, the margins are razor thin, where you're working for a wage and all, all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, Scott touched on it. The, the systems that we built are, are based on solving pain points. Mm. You know, we're solved. We, 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 we know the pain points of the industry. We know the pain points of what it takes to run a business or what it takes to get it up and running. And, 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 you know, the, the fact that we know those and, and have put things in place to solve those really allows someone to get in and, and, you know, you're going to be taken from where you're at today, which may not have any idea about the painting industry, where we're going to bring you up to a level that you're going to be professional contractor with, within right. a, a very short period of time, which is huge which is huge. Well, I always look at it, Mike, and I say the royalties that you're paying in a franchise system, if you want, you couldn't hire people to have that knowledge for the, you know, for the percentage of royalties that you pay. Um, it's, it, you know, the, the amount of experience that you get in that system, because sometimes there can be a mis, mis, you know, uh, uh, mislabel of, when you're a franchise owner, you don't actually own your business, which couldn't be further from the truth. Um, and, you know, why you get into franchising and why that you've decided to franchise, A, is a question I'd like to ask you in a second here. But going forward, it's important to know that your success is their success. Oh, 100%. You know? So on a, on a royalty basis, you collect royalties to have the you know the, the resources to be able to provide that support so it's in your best interest to provide a rock solid system and you guys are at the perfect size in my opinion where you are coast to coast you you're you're at that size where you know what you're doing your experience has been there but would you say that there's still lots of areas to develop in canada like there's lots of opportunities for oh geez you Absolutely. know it, when, when we look at some of the areas we're in now, and even, even takes where Scott's operating, Moncton. And Moncton, not a large city. And realistically, um, 
the success that he's had in, in Moncton is huge mm. and all kinds of potential. Um, oh, yeah, when, and, and, and you, you look across the country and you look at Ontario, you look at, you know, Manitoba, even, even the where prairies. we have, yeah, yeah we, 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 we have, we have a franchise in North fan. BC alone has probably 10 or 15 yeah. areas that could be very, very, very viable. Right? I think con conservatively, and that's conservatively, you could put another 30 to 35 units in Canada and, and be a, you know, and be up to the 45 unit range easily. And you, yeah. and you would still have room after yeah. that. Yeah. Well, like, for anyone who's, who's listening that doesn't know the East coast as well, like Moncton, you know, when you can take Mountain Dieppe Riverview, you're what you're 110,000. Uh, um, yeah, I think we're up a little closer to 150 now, but yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's if you take the surrounding areas, yeah. right? But yeah. you look at you know Halifax, where you are like you look at the, the economic and development growing communities in the country, Moncton is is in the top five. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's so, growing. and the what I love about this business is a when you paint a house, that's not the last time you're going to paint it. No. Right. And I don't know the stats. And you guys probably have some data that shows, but from a visual standpoint, if you serve someone lunch, hopefully they love it. Great. Yeah. You can't see it. You can't yeah. see it. Like with, with elite trade painting, you can show your work. Um, and you know, so we look at if when you try to kind of narrow it down to all things like that, there's lots of room for development. The industry is booming. I can't think of any brand, any painting brand that I've ever heard of that has what you guys have to offer as far as a system and support. Um, you know, where do you see your growth in the next, you know, I know, you know, the, the whole five, what's your five year plan. I'm not going to throw that right. bullshit at you. Right. But <laughs> so with your, with your growth, is there anywhere in particular that you'd like to see growth? Uh, even though the country itself is, is, is hopping and booming, is there any particular areas that you'd like to focus on the most? We feel that oh, yeah, there, there, there are some areas here in Atlantic Canada that are just perfect markets. St. John, New Brunswick, Fredericton, New Brunswick, where you're at, Steve, Charlottetown, yeah. DEI, <clears throat> huge market. Um, St. Saint John's, Newfoundland, mm. you know, there's four right there. Uh, you get into Ontario and Ontario's endless, but Ottawa, Ottawa's a huge market with, you know, multiple territories in it so there there's you know and, and realistically I, I i i really could go on for the next 10 minutes and and describe all kinds of territories that are fantastic but you know atlanta canada's here we we know st john we know everything we know charlottetown <clears throat> we've we've you know and we know and we know ottawa fairly well there's a, a number of areas in ontario that we'd like to have mm -hmm. you know people in soon um yeah. The prairies is a very hot market as well. Like Saskatoon. Absolutely. Oh, just, just rocking. But, yeah. you know, I, I think that no matter where you are in Canada, you know, and, and again, St. John's, Newfoundland, amazing market. Amazing market. And it's, yeah. it's funny, someone who's never been there. Do you know there's 21 McDonald's in St. John's? So it, it's, it, you don't need to have a 500,000 population. Well, St. John's is quite big. It's about 250. Yeah. But, you know, no matter what, where you go, I think that let's just talk about the, the difference between transactional and 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 sales and development folks. If you treat any business as a transactional, where you're waiting for them to come to you, um, you know, your your scaling can be can be quite a bit different. Um, and but from someone who's sales and development oriented, and we we all know that the word sales can be a dirty word. Um, mm. uh, you're you're solving a problem. And, you know, I, I've said it before where if you, let's just say we're in St. John, New Brunswick, down by the Hilton there or the waterfront with all those restaurants. And if you're walking by and there's, you know, there's 15 restaurants, they all have a patio in the summer and they all have a host standing with the podium and the menu. If the three of us are walking down there and we say, okay, what do they have on a menu? Right on. Okay. And you go to the next one. Maybe the host is on their phone. Maybe they're, hello, how are you? The one who's out there going, gentlemen, it's happy hour. Come on in. Here's some nacho, whatever. So 
do you encourage your franchisees to go out and really knock on doors and get business? Certainly part of the uh, marketing plan if they wish to implement that. <clears throat> We're in pretty high demand mark, right. high demand marketplace right now. Um, a lot of Google ads, um, Facebook ads, um, you know, signs, you know, you go back to, you know, we, we sort of segment our marketing into what we call the traditional marketing and then the digital marketing. And digital marketing is is a very effective. It, it basically has a lot of use, and most guys use it, you know, significantly. Uh, traditional marketing is is things like going to a home show mm -hmm. and setting up a booth, and you know, you talk to 50, 60 people that want quotes in a weekend, and that can be a huge boost for a lot of our, our, our franchisees. Or you, you know, you if you wanted to, you know, sending out flyers, you know, sending out, you know. Um, things at their door to say, Hey, you know what, are you interested in having a painting quote? Um, I find that, you know, those things become fairly useful in, in, in the startup of the operation. But as, as you, and you know, one of the key elements we haven't touched on here, Steve, is, is the fact that repeat clients, yeah, repeat right. clients is huge in our industry. Like let's, let's, let's deal with the fact that you get one client and you go out there and you do a great job guess what? You're probably going to see them in three or four years or even less. And and the ironic part about it is you go out and you do a, a job for one client and you paint their home and all of a sudden you're getting a call from their office. Right. Let's paint, let, let's get them to paint our office or, you know, they're, they've referred you onto a friend or, 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 or whatever. So, or the right, or the right commercial client, and you can be back on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. A hundred percent. You know, we we've got we've got clientele that basically, you know, we might do 30, 40 jobs a year for them. Wow. Yeah. You know, and, and and you know, the funny thing in our system, we actually have stats, and and one of the stats is previous clients, and that can be as high as fifty percent, sixty percent of of, of you know, and obviously you're not going to have that when you first start up. But the reality is you're building that up and, and, and Absolutely. you know, and so the traditional marketing has its role. Mm -hmm. The digital marketing has its role. The the, the combination of the two is, is the way most guys will start off. Mm -hmm. um, as you build up that critical mass of, of clientele, um, that's how that's how things grow, right? Like you, you have that level of I'm here. Well, that means next year you're going to be here because you're continuing your marketing program and you have your base clientele and that sort of just pushes you, pushes you, pushes you. Right, right. So it, it, it's, it's a unique industry in that, you know, um, painting just renews itself. P people paint Mike, every five long, years. And not to interrupt you, I just that really caught me a thought I had earlier is What's the average? I know we've been in our house nine years and we've had it painted, I think, three times. Um, what's the what is the average? Is or is that way above and beyond? Uh, maybe it depends on the people, but you know, in your Scott, what would you say to that? Yeah. And then, Mike, maybe you can uh, exterior, depending on the services, obviously, like take any decks or fences out of it, but you know, an exterior of a home, um. I typically see a cycle of seven to 10 years, I think is, is usually what we see. That's fair. Yeah, we've had our outside yeah. done once, but what about inside guys? Inside? It really depends. Uh, I have got clients. Um, they could change a room every couple of years. We honestly. Have kids. That's uh, we have yeah. Kids, toddlers, it's just destroyed. Even, even our, you know, even using my personal space here, um, we've only been in this place six years and we've had it painted twice. So I, I guess, I don't know, Mike. Yeah. Okay. Years, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and so it's, it's, uh, do you find Mike that it, is there a certain tool that you have? Do you, do you, do you, uh, um, expect your franchise owners or do you train to get back to those people? If it is three, four years is the average. Is there is there something that that you you like your franchise owners to do where they reach out and say, hey, it's been three years, you want another quote? Is there anything along, along that lines? Yeah, you can always go to your client list, download your client list, reach out to those clients. Um, 
it's funny. One of the things we do now that we're in the, the Christmas season here, um, we send up Christmas cards to all our clients for the last five years. Love it. And, and, you know, like, and it's, it's a real Christmas card. It's not a digital Christmas card. It's the actual card that, you know, they open up and, of you, you know, and Scott holding a cat. Right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. Not, not, not quite, but you know, we we could do that. It could, it could. Um, but yeah, no, I I think that when it comes down to um, repeat clients, some people will paint their house every three to four years. Some people will paint a couple of rooms in the house every year. Yeah, I mean. It's all over the place. Um, interior painting is like it's 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 like the forest. It keeps renewing all the time, and even exterior painting. Like you've got to do maintenance on on the exterior house, and you know an average paint job can last seven to ten years. So, and that's not always the that's not always a reason why. Sometimes no. it's because they just want to change the look of the house. Yeah, right. totally. You know, and 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 and. One of the big things that, you know, certainly it's, it's sort of died off a little bit, but it's still there. Um, people buying new homes. Yeah. People buying a house. Change you know, of ownership. Yeah. Change of ownership. You know, we're going in, we're repainting those every time. Like that's a huge business for us. And, you know, it's, it, it's funny over the years, you know, you actually have people call up and they send you, you know, the pictures of, of, of their house and some room measurements and, we don't even meet them. We send them a quote and they book us in. We go in, we paint the house. House is all done. And, you know, the, 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 uh, sometimes we, we haven't even met the clients, but the, the reality is said high, high demand for, um, those, 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 uh, new purchase repaints. And of course, the other side of that is if you're selling your house, you're probably repainting before you sell the house. Right. Yeah. So it's ironic. I, I we've actually done projects where we've actually gone in, painted the house for for resale for the client selling, and then came back in later and repainted it for the people that bought it. And the one so, thing with painting, guys, you've probably seen this. It, I suck at it. I am. I just. I don't have the the cutting. Like, if you do a bad job, it shows. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those ones where maybe what you get to touch on when you talked before where people, what's your time worth to go out and do, you know, you have a million dollar home and do a really shitty job painting it. But it's one of those things where unless you do it a lot, you're really not that good at it. You know, and I just... uh, It's also what I think it's what's it's it's what's allowed the industry to boom as well as people, you know, when you speak to time the one thing people put a ton of value on right now and have the least amount of is time. And that's why right, they're hiring right, it out right. is because they don't, they, when the time that they have to do something that they choose, they usually aren't going to choose to go paint a room. So. Right. That's why, yeah. And I see, see the key, ahead, the, right? the, the, the key element of painting is the fact that even if you're really good at it, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. You know, even if you're good at it, it's it's you know the the fact is that most people are bad at it because for some reason in their mind they think they can paint a room in like half an hour cool. and 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 they're and they don't take the time to do it the right way but even the guys that are you know this cracker jack painters for us man those guys it, it still takes time right mm-hmm. and you realize really fast that you're scared of heights yeah <laughs> really yeah fast. that's true too right? that's true too. that's another element right no i think and, and again i look at it from I'm a very visual person myself, uh, but represents about 25% of the population. I like something you can see, you know, like yeah. investments. You get a piece of paper every now and then. It's, Geez, why do I lose so much money? I like commercial real estate that I can touch. Right? <laughs> yeah. But the one thing I find with painting is you can walk into a house and someone drop $5,000 in new appliances. I don't even notice them. But when you walk in and there's a fresh coat of paint, yeah. It just it just gleams on it, right? Yeah. And the one thing I love about this industry, you know, let's take the, the company aside and we'll talk about the industry. It's not going anywhere. In fact, it's only it's only accelerating. And you're seeing it from the industry. If you, the industry of painting in North America is a huge franchise market investment. Huge. So we all agree with that. Great. But then you start peeling back who has the best things to offer. 
You guys do not have an operations manual and say, go get him, Tiger. You have that that system that's second to none. And I think that whenever uh, uh, you, you start looking at the people that are looking at franchise opportunities in Canada, um, we're going to make a lot of noise here in 2024. And we want to make sure that people out there that are looking for opportunities say, here's one you're certainly going to want to look at. Um, whether it's because when you look at your competitor or you look at who, you know, who is your competitor in franchising? It's anyone right around your price point. That's really service-based non-traditional. Um, and as that whole industry just accelerates, it's only better for elite trade painting. And I'm excited about the future with it because we start looking around to reach those people that we want. Whenever someone gets on a call with you and is going through the process of what elite trade painting has to offer, compared to other ones around, <laughs> compared to a lot of other services, your jaw is kind of dropped. And I mean, I think that you guys have the confidence for that. So going forward, if, uh, um, you know, if, if you could say one thing to the public, one thing about your, you know, say five or six or 10 words, one thing about your franchise opportunity, Scott, what would it be? <laughs> Throw that at you right quick. <laughs> Cut. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mike, I'll throw to you quick. I don't even um five or six words. Well, Mike, okay, take the thing about that. Mike, if I if I asked you to just respond in a quick sentence about about the opportunity, you know, and not to get too touchy feely, but what is the opportunity for franchising with elite trade painting across the country? You know what? Established business in an established market in an established industry. Love it. Love it. And I'll give a thumbs up to that. <laughs> right. <laughs> you yeah, know, and, 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 but it, but it's so true. Like, yeah. you know, the, the, the reality is, is that, you know, you look at the history of some of these um, other franchises and, and, and they certainly wouldn't have the history that, that we have or and certainly the experience and the knowledge and, and, and the ability to, you know, guide people along so that they're actually going to run a, a, a great business. And that's, that's a key element for us right is that you know and 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 to be honest we 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 both really care about the success of our, our people we want them to be successful yeah well Absolutely. that's good and like i said you're at that perfect size where you can flex a bit well to say we're looks we we're all over the country we've been around a long time there isn't a whole lot that we haven't seen but i also like that you can be, you know, and not that you want to be challenged on how to operate the business, but that's the way we've always done things is the most detrimental, worst thing a business can ever, can ever do. These are adapting, I find, and you have no, you have, you have, yeah, well, you have no choice but to do that as you're, as you're yeah. looking for the next generation. Um, so, you know, where do you see the, uh, we'll say the painting industry in the next, in the next 10 years? Oh, it's one of those weird ones where the painting industry and I think Mike could attest to this as he's seen it um, a little longer than I have. But uh, I also know that when when the economy is is tight, one of the cheapest forms of renovation somebody can do is paint. And when wow. the economy isn't tight, uh, people are renovating. And one of the things you got to do after you renovate is paint. And so painting just seems to always exist. Um, it'll fluctuate. There'll be high times and low times, but it it's never, uh, to my knowledge, I've yet to read an article on something that's going to replace putting paint on drywall. So, yeah, it, it's funny. It's, I, 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 that, that was great. I <laughs> I'm going to write that down yeah. and literally give that to our development team because right. wow, is that true? Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, I, what's I, used your... to, I I used to tell people that you know. And and I said it for years, you know, and I, and I've seen it. I, I've actually seen it, it, it happen. Where in good times, people paint. They buy new houses. They buy, you know, businesses are are, are booming. Everything's going, and and the thing they do is they paint. And in bad times, even the businesses. I mean, they may not be growing or expanding, but. You know, it's important to keep staff happy. And one of the cheapest ways to do it is by adding a fresh coat of paint to your offices. It's usually a budget item for a business. Yeah. Yeah. 
and 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 then you know people that are in their homes you know they 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 like to they like to get out and maybe buy a new home but conditions aren't right for that well the cheapest way to change your your environment is is to paint and and you know um I, I think we've proven two things in the last number of years. One is, is that we were a, uh, a recession proof business. And, and the second one was that we were a COVID proof business. So we, we've actually proved Now, Hopefully we don't have to prove that again on the COVID side, but you know, the, the reality is that we, um, we came through uh, both of those things very well. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, guys, I think this was this was wonderful. It was uh, awesome. awesome to have you guys on today. Um, and, uh, you, you know, I think you knocked it out of the park when it comes to basically why we do this podcast is to talk about your business, talk about the opportunity and answer some questions that people might have. Uh, and, uh, you know, you got me fired up. So it, it was awesome. And thanks so much for your time today, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Steve? It, was, uh, it was a great experience, and uh, yeah. we hope the phones start uh, just keep ringing. Yeah. Well, yeah, if yeah. you're interested in elite trade painting franchise opportunities, you've probably seen this. You're going to see it a lot this year. Click the link below, and we would be more than happy to have a conversation about franchise opportunities with elite Mike trade Bento painting. Mike Bento here with Elite Trade Painting. I had a great time today chatting with you, Steve, on our elite trade painting business. Look forward to chatting to everyone in the future about joining our team scott with elite trade painting here we had a blast this week chatting with steve on the fran canada podcast about our exciting opportunities with elite trade painting thank you for joining us on the fran canada podcast where we speak all things franchising in canada make sure you like subscribe and share below you can also visit our website our facebook linkedin and youtube instagram and please add me on linkedin steve collette